Hi everybody, welcome to Review in Precalculus. You will see the timestamp in the description. If you want to go to any particular question, just click on the link in the description. All right, let's go to the first one. Uh, determine if this relation is a function. Uh, so first we look at uh, the first component. All of them are different. Uh, so in that case, it will be a function. So yes, it is a function. And then we write out the domain. Negative 4, negative 3, 0, 3, and 5. So the domain is the set of all the first components. Uh, the range will be the set of all the second components. 12, 5, negative 4. We already have 5, so we only need to write once. And then 21. Next, uh, determine whether the equation define y as a function of x. Uh, so y is a function of x, meaning x is in the domain and y will be in the range uh, if it is a function. Uh, so what we do is uh, we're going to solve for y. So I will take the square root on both sides. Every time we do that, I have to put plus or minus. Uh, so we have y equal to plus or minus square root of 4 minus x squared. So once again, x is in the domain and y is in the range. Uh, so in this case, we have one value of x. There is uh, there are two values of y. One is square root of 4 minus x squared. And the other one is negative 4 minus x squared. So one x value gives us two y values. It is not a function. Right. Uh, next, we find the domain of the function. We have uh, these two uh, problems. Uh, first, this one is the ratio of two functions. Uh, so the denominator cannot equal to 0 because divide by 0 will be undefined. Uh, so in this case, we have denominator not equal to 0. So x squared minus 49 not equal to 0. And then we just solve for it uh, as if it is an equal sign. So x squared not equal to 49. And then we take the square root on both sides. Just like we did earlier, there will be a plus or minus. So if x not equal to plus or minus square 49 7. Uh, so x not equal to plus or minus 7 is the domain. Everything but 7 or negative 7 will be good. Right. So the first thing we need to watch out for is the denominator not equal to 0. Uh, next, this will have an even root. Uh, when we have an even root, inside have to be greater than or equal to 0, because if it's less than 0, an even root of a negative number will give us imaginary. Uh, so we have 10 minus x uh, greater than or equal to 0. And then we solve for x, uh, so minus 10 on both sides. Uh, it's still greater than or equal to negative 10. 
and then we will divide by negative 1 on both sides. When we divide by a negative number, the inequality will reverse. And we have x less than or equal to 10. Uh, the next one is uh, pretty obvious. Uh, the function f minus the function g, so we just subtract them. Uh, the only thing we need to worry, I mean, pay attention is uh, the second function should be in the parentheses. So that negative affect everything after that. So for x minus seven minus a x plus five, so that gives us minus four x minus 2. Right. Uh, what is the domain of this function? It is a polynomial, polynomial, and polynomial, pretty much. Uh, so it is defined everywhere, and the domain will be all real number. Uh, next we have difference quotient. So that is the different quotient. Uh, so we start with the different quotient, which is that formula. Uh, first, we have f of x plus h. So that is where we put x plus h into this x. So we start with a function. f is something square plus a times that something minus 9. That's how something happened to be x plus h. So that is f of x plus h. So we will write uh, x plus h square plus 8 x plus h minus 9. Then subtract. Uh, f of x. Uh, so that is just the original function. Of that over h. Right. Now we'll multiply this out. Uh, that is x plus a times x plus h. And then ax, ah minus nine. Uh, this negative affect everything after that. Right. Uh, so we should have negative uh, I'll just write in black. X square minus ax plus 9 over h. I just write this in black. Right. And then I'll multiply this out and then try to simplify. We can, can we can see that negative nine and nine cancel out and, and uh, ax minus ax, but I just keep it. So we have x square hx 
and another hx so that two hx and then h square ax ah minus 9 minus x square minus ax plus 9 over h now we simplify uh, we have x square here cancel with negative x square the ax cancel with negative ax and the negative 9 cancel with 9 and after everything cancel we have 2hx on top h square and a h all of them have an h in it so we will factor out uh, we should have 2x plus h plus h over h and then we cancel on h that gives us 2x plus h plus 8. Right. Next, we have 1 over 6x. As always, we start with a different quotient formula. of x plus h uh, the function is 1 over 6 times something I, do, I just blank out the 2x uh, next if we put x plus h into it I should have x plus h here so have 1 over 6 x plus h subtract uh, f of x, uh, this is the original function all over h. Right. Uh, to simplify this fraction, uh, to simplify this, uh, we'll multiply top and bottom by uh, the least common denominator. Will be 6x times x plus h. That is the least common denominator. Multiply top and bottom by that. And multiplying, we should have and that multiply the 6 cancel out, x plus h cancel out, only an x left. Uh, the 6x cancel out, we have x plus h left. Uh, the bottom, we have 6h x plus h x. The reason we don't multiply this out because similar to the previous example, previous problem, the h at the bottom will cancel out. So we'll keep this h because that h will cancel with something. Right. Uh, distribute the negative, we have x minus x minus h over 6h x plus h x uh, the x cancel out we have negative h 6h x plus h x and then we cancel the h we end up with negative 1 on the top 6 x plus h times x right. uh, so most of the step uh, most of this problem we will have the step where we cancel everything with tau and h and another step to cancel the h at the bottom right uh, next we have 5 square root of x We start with the formula of different quotient. F of x plus h 
uh, we will substitute the x plus h into x. So we have 5 of x plus h. And then subtract f of x is 5 square root of x over h. Here we can factor out of 5 uh, or not, it doesn't matter. But what we must do is uh, to try to simplify something and cancel the h at the bottom. Uh, so usually when we have the square root, uh, we will multiply by the contrary. So exactly like this, except it will be a plus in the middle. We don't, don't multiply the bottom. We want to keep this h here, so it will cancel later. Right, uh, let us multiply it out. This times this, 5 times 5, 25. And then square root times square root. We have that. And then again, we have 25 square root of x, square root of x plus h minus 5, I mean 25 square root of x square root of x plus h and then minus 25 square root of x square over h 5 uh, times square root of x plus h plus 5 square root of x right when we multiply the contrary the middle term cancel out and square cancel the square root, square cancel the square root, and so we just have 25 x plus h minus 25 x all over, again we don't multiply the denominator, we want to keep this h there to cancel later. Right, multiply now the top. Uh, we have 25x, 25h, minus 25x. The bottom is still the same. If it doesn't have an x, this should cancel out. Uh, so we have 25h over 5 square root of x plus h and 5 square root of x. Of course, there's the h in front of it. And then we can cancel the h. Uh, so we will have 25 over, actually now we need to factor out of 5. So we have x plus h plus square root of x. And then the 25 and 5 cancel out. We end up with 5 square root of x plus h plus square root of x. So that's what we have. Uh, next will be uh, very simple. Determine whether the function is even and odd or neither. Uh, this we are given the graph. Uh, so an even graph is symmetric uh, with respect to the y-axis. With respect to uh, the y-axis. And this is odd if it is symmetric.
with respect to the origin. Right. Uh, so on this one, uh, certainly it's not symmetric with the y-axis because if the pawn here, there's no pawn on that side. And this is also not odd because if there's a pawn here, there should be a pawn across from the origin and we don't have it. So the first one is neither. And this one is odd, just based on the symmetry. So, symmetric uh, with respect, I'm sorry, this one's even. Symmetric with respect to uh, the y axis. Now we use a definition to uh, determine if the function is odd, even, or neither. Right, on the 11. So we always start with f of negative x. So we put negative x uh, into x. So we have that. Now negative, so that three negative sign, it will remain negative. 3x squared minus 5. Now this will be exactly the original function. So it will be even. If it is odd, then we have to manufacture the negative. Uh, we'll see that in the next one. Uh, the next example, we start with the same thing. f of negative x. And so we put negative x into x. Which is that. Now we have negative x. Negative x squared, still x squared, minus 4. Now compare this to the original function. They are not equal to original function. So that means they are not. It is not even. Now if it's not even, we will manufacture the negative. So we pull out a minus sign, and then what's left? What's left is just an x over x squared minus four which is negative. Uh, this is original function. So what we have is equal to negative of f of x. So if f of x equal to negative f of x, uh, this is going to be odd. And if we don't have that, it will be neither. Uh, next, determine whether the function is increasing, decrease, or constant. So this one, very easy. Uh, from negative 3, x from negative 3 to 0, uh, the function going up. So it is increasing. Right. Uh, average rate of change. The average rate of change is given by that formula. Uh, from 2 to 8 or from 8 to 2, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is we have two points and we find the slope of the second line go to those two points. Uh, so from Let's do from eight, uh, 2 to 8, so A is 2 and B is 8. Uh, so we have square root of 2.
times eight minus square root of two times two over eight minus two. So uh, square of 16, which is four, uh, square root four, which is two, and over six. So that is one over three. I mean two over six, which is one over three. Four minus two is two over six, reduced to one term. Uh, find the numbers, if any, at which the function has local minimum. Uh, where are the local? What are the local minimum or minima? Uh, so local minimum, uh, we find there are two points here and here. So we say local mean equal to at this point, y value is equal to 0, when x value is equal to negative 3. Or we could also say uh, local minimum is this point uh, when x equal to 3. Uh, next, uh, evaluate the piecewise function and at uh, the given values of independent variable. Uh, so we have x is equal to negative 5. Sorry. At x equal to negative 5. Uh, so negative 5. If we put in here negative 5 greater than negative 3, it's not true. But it, negative 5 is less than negative 3. So this equation is true. So we're going to use this part of the function. So we have f of negative 5 is equal to negative, we put negative 5 into that x. Uh, so that is negative 6 and turn to positive 6. Right. Uh, next we have application of the piecewise y function. So a cell phone plan, uh, basic. $20 per month, including 100 minutes. So where there's less than 100 minutes or 100 minutes, that'll be $20 flat. Uh, if we have uh, the second 100 minutes, will be 0 0.75 per minute. And additionally, after that will be 10 cents each. Right. Uh, so what is the charge of 200 minutes of coal? So for the first 100 minutes, is 100. So we start with 100 regardless. And then starting from the minute right after 100, it's going to be with this rate, meaning that the first 100 is I should say $20, sorry. It's $20 for the first 100 minutes. And we have 200, meaning there will be 100 minutes over. And for that 100 minutes, we have to pay at this rate. Uh, next, if it is 250, we start from 20, and then the next 100 minutes, we have to go at this rate. And then there will be 50 minutes after that, uh, will be at a different rate. So, first 100 minutes, $20, the next 100 minutes, at that rate, the last 50 minutes at that rate. Right, let's use the calculator here and get those numbers. Right. 20 plus 100 times 0 0.75, that's 27.5. And um, 
if we add I mean if we have that plus 50 minutes at uh, 10 cent a minute will be 32.5 right. now we construct the function as a function of minute let's put the calculator away If anything less than 100 or equal to, uh, we're going to pay $20. Anything between anything between 100 and 200, we have to pay at this rate, but we still have to have $20 from the beginning. So we're going to have x minus 100 times 0 0.075. Yeah, so a uh, minute that is over the first 100 minutes. Right, next, uh, we will have $20 for the first 100 minutes. x minus 100 times 0 0.0. 0.75 and after that whatever that is over 200 minutes we have to pay at 0 0.1 and that is for x greater than 200 minutes right. of course we can combine the numbers but that's not important I'm just going to leave it at that Right. Right. Uh, graph a function uh, negative x plus 2 and then square of x plus 3 uh, for negative x plus 2 that is equation of a line we need only two points to graph the line a line so uh, x uh, if we have negative x plus 2 if x equal to uh, here we have to choose something less than 0 uh, if we choose 0 I uh, well, don't choose 0 choose negative 1 Negative, negative one plus two is negative minus three. Two from negative one is three. Negative two. Negative, negative two plus two is four. So pretty much we have those two points. Uh, so connect them, uh, we have the graph. But notice that this is not equal to zero, so we only go up to zero, but not including zero. So that is this part of the graph. Next, we have square root of x plus three. Uh, square root of x. Square of x uh, is just that, and then we plus three, so we just go up three units. And this one has the equal sign. So that's what we have. Right. Uh, next we have transformation. So beginning by graphing the, the graph of standard function x squared. Right, x squared. Just kind of get the sketch. Not it doesn't have to be perfect. So that is x squared. Right. Now uh, we have two things. Uh, first the minus 3 and then the plus 4 minus 3 I will move the graph 3 unit to the right and the plus 4 
uh, we move it up four units. So we move to the right three units. And then move up four units. We should say that we're going to do this first and then that. Right. Uh, next, we have uh, this function, which is a little bit tricky. Right, but we have square root of x. That. And we transform from that function. Right. Uh, I will rewrite this a little bit. I will factor out the minus. So this is what we have. So we have the square root of x. So there are three things here uh, to consider. Uh, first, there is the minus. That is inside of the square root. So this will flip it horizontally. So flip, we say horizontal. Uh, flipped or reflection. Uh, the plus two, I mean minus two. We have two unit to the right. And then the minus one, uh, one unit down. Right. Order operation inside first, so these two first, and then moving down will be last. So this will be last. Uh, horizontal reflection and two unit to the right. Uh, we're going to multiply. Or divide first, so this is going to be the first thing we do, and then the second. So we're going to flip first, and then two units to the right. And then one unit down. That's what we have. Right. Next, more transformation. Right. Uh, the graph of the function is given. Next, we have a negative of x plus 2 plus 1. So uh, we have the negative here. Uh, the plus 2 and then the plus 1 uh, the negative here on the outside so reflect vertically uh, plus 2 will be 2 unit to the left And then plus one will be one unit up. Right, order transformation. Inside first and then outside. Inside we have the plus two, so this is the first thing we do. And then outside we have the minus and then the plus uh, multiplied by negative. And then plus one, so this will be multiply first and then add. Right, so everything to the left. Two unit. One two, one two, 
and then flip it upside down. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four the other way. The other way, to this point will be the same, so we have that. And finally, we move this up one unit. Notice whenever we do that, uh, we just focus on the last graph. So when I draw the, the one in this graph, I'm only focused on the one here. Not focus on the the original graph or the one in blue here. Well, that's what we have. Uh, uh, for the function, let's find a graph after the following transform applied to square root of x. So we have y equal to uh, square root of x. We're we'll we'll trying to put things into it. First, shift it down 6 unit. Down 6 unit, so we know it's going to minus 6. I'll reflect about the x axis. The x axis. Uh, so it's going to be up and down, right? So it is like this about the x axis. So vertical flip, so that should be minus on the outside. And then shift it for unit left. So that's what we have. Uh, next we have the graphs. We just write the function. First, this graph is the shape of absolute values of x. So we start with y equal to absolute values of x. Uh, we might add something to it later. Right. Also, uh, what we see is there's no stretching or shrinking because uh, this just go up one to right to the one. So it's not very skinny or very wide. So that's still just absolute values of x. <coughs> Uh, so, but originally, absolute values of x, uh, we look like this. See, that's what I'm talking about, the point 1 and 1. Right there. So, we don't have any stretching or shrinking here. We just have uh, shifting. Uh, so, shifting we have from this point, there will be 3 unit to the left, and then 2 you. sorry. I'm talking about this point, right? So two unit to the left, sorry. Two unit to the left. And then three unit down. Three unit down. And then two unit to the left. So, I mean, it's always from the right to the right, right? So that should be x minus 2. Okay, let's scratch that. Two units to the right. And then three units down. Right, so that we, that's what we should have. Move to the right. Two units and then down three units. Right. Next, uh, this shape looks like a square root. Also, there doesn't look like there's any stretching and shrinking. Right. Now, uh, look like this point goes there. So, one up two to the right, one up, two to the right, I mean, sorry, compared to this original square of x, we move two to the left, yeah, from this point, one up, 
and two to the left. And then there's just a vertical flip to it, so we throw in the negative. Right. Uh, next we have polynomials. Right. Uh, form of polynomials of the zeros of the degree are given. Uh, use the leading coefficient of one. Right. Uh, so we have the zeros are those. Uh, let me write that important theorem again. Uh, so the theorem x equal to r is a zero uh, if and only if x minus r is a factor. Uh, if and only if means a stack to statement we can go from one to another and then from another go back. So it go both ways. Uh, so meaning that if we have those are the zeros, then we should have the factors of x minus all the zeros. Or we should have x plus 3, x plus 2, and x minus 2. And here they tell us the leading coefficient is 1. Because essentially we might have like uh, a 2 here. Does not affect the factors. Does not affect the 0. Uh, but they say leading coefficient is 1. So this is definitely 1. Uh, so that is the polynomial function. All we need to do is just multiply this out. Right. I multiply these two first. Remember, those look like a conjugate, right? So x plus 3 is still in front. Uh, x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 4. Indeed, they are conjugates because we cancel those out. And then multiply this out again. x times x squared, x cubed minus 4x plus 3x squared minus 2. Right. If we want to, we can put them in the decreasing order of powers. x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. Uh, next, we have uh, given pretty much this state to 0 and multiplicity. Uh, so this is uh, fairly simple. Say zeros, multiplicity. Oh, they also ask for the behavior near the x-axis. Right. Uh, so we just do this for each factor. X plus five. If we show that equal to zero, if we let it equal to zero, we're gonna have negative five. And multiplicity of 1. If it's an odd multiplicity, it will cross the x-axis. And then we have the other factor. If that equal to 0, then x must be 5. Multiplicity is the power of the factor. And it is an even, so we will touch the x-axis and turn around. Uh, same thing on 27. I'll just let you do it. Right. Uh, the next part is a little more interesting. Uh, use the x-intercept to determine the interval on which the function is above uh, or below the x-axis. Right. So we do pretty much the same thing.
So we have x minus 2 square equal to 0. Uh, that gives us x equal to 2. Multiplicity of 2. And the behavior, it will touch the x-axis. How do that relate to out from? Well, you see. And then x plus 3 square. That's not really interesting. But nevertheless. Uh, so negative 3. And then that will be equal to uh, multiplicity of 2. So that also touch the x-axis and turn around. So we have that. And now we answer our problem. Let's say this is the x-axis. Uh, there are two zeros of 2 and negative 3. Huh. Now, what we see is if we're going to put a very big number in here, let's say like 1,000, actually just about 5 will, be, will do. Uh, if we put a very big number, it's going to be positive square, positive square. So it's going to be positive when x greater than 2. So the graph if we have to say start from here, if you go to 2, but it touch the x-axis of 2, so it's bounce up. And then go down and go to negative 3. And also touch the x-axis and bounce. So you see the graph always uh, above the x-axis. So all of them except for negative 3 and negative 2. So all of them are positive. Uh, so we say above the x-axis, we have to stay on three intervals, but those two points. So negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 2, and 2 to infinity. Uh, next. Uh, determine the end behaviors. Uh, so for that, we just look at uh, the highest power terms uh, to x cubed. That is two x cubed. Uh, first, uh, the coefficient is two, which is positive. If it's positive, the right end go up. Next, the degree 3. Which is odd. If it's odd, the behavior will be opposite on both ends. Now put these two together. The right end is up, the left end is opposite to that, so the left end is down. So it will fall to the left and rise to the right. Yeah. Uh, next, we'll find the vertical symptoms on these two. Uh, vertical symptoms. So to find vertical symptoms, this is what we need. Um, the vertical symptom is where the function is undefined. Uh, so the denominator or the bottom has to be equal to zero. But if both the bottom and the top equal to zero, we will have the whole. So we have the bottom equal to zero, but the top is not. So in the first one, we let the bottom equal to zero. Uh, so we have x squared minus 4 equal to 0. Uh, move the 4 over. 
And remember, even though we did this three times on just on this review, there's a plus or minus when you take the square root on both sides. <coughs> uh, so we should have this. Uh, so x not x equal to plus or minus 2. Now we check at uh, x equal to 2, what happened to the top? I just put 2 on the top for x. And sorry, that is not equal to 0. So bottom equal to 0, which is good. The top not equal to 0, which is good. So we have x equal to 2 is a vertical symptom. Uh, we do the same thing for x equal to negative 2. Uh, so the top equal to negative 2 plus 7, which is 5. And that is not equal to 0 either, which is also good. Uh, so on this problem, uh, we have two vertical symptoms. x equal to 2 and x equal to negative 2. Right. So pretty much just this for the vertical symptom. Uh, same thing on the next one. Let bottom equal to zero, uh, which is x squared plus 5x plus 4 equal to zero. And we solve for x. Uh, we can factor out. Actually, not factor out, but just factor in general. Uh, x plus 1 and x plus 4. Uh, x plus 1 equal to 0. x plus 4 equal to 0. Uh, so we have x equal to negative 1 and x equal to negative 4. That's where the bottom is equal to 0. Now, when x equal to negative 1, uh, the top equal to I just put negative 1 in for x negative negative 1 square plus 16 uh, that equal to 15 and that not equal to 0 which is good and now we use negative 4 Uh, the top will be equal to negative negative 4 square plus 16. Uh, 4 negative 4 square, that's 16 with the negative. So negative 16 plus 16, uh, that equal to 0. We require the top not equal to 0. So this equal to 0, so that's not good. It will be a whole instead. Um, A whole at x equal to negative 4. But as far as vertical symptoms, we only have one. Right. Uh, next, we have the horizontal symptoms. I group those three together. Uh, for horizontal symptom, we use the degrees, uh, the acronym should write for horizontal symptoms. B O B O. Right. Bigger on the bottom, uh, y equal to zero. Bigger on the top, there will be none. The exponential the exponents are equal or exponent. Exponents are the same divide coefficient. That uh, what it is. Uh, so on this one, degree on top equal to degree at the bottom. Uh, 
in which case we just divide the leading coefficient. So this you can write one. So six over one, which is six. Uh, so the horizontal seems to y equal to six. Next, on this one, uh, degree on top is one. which is less than degree at the bottom. Which is degree at the bottom is bigger. So bigger on the bottom, y equal to zero. Is the horizontal symptom. And finally, bigger on the top, There will be no horizontal symptom. Right. So just these three scenarios. These three scenarios. Right. Our father of lead asymptote. Uh, so for this one, uh, oblate asymptotes, uh, we have to have two things, require two things. Uh, first, uh, degree on top have to be one more than the bottom, meaning degree on the top equal to the degree at the bottom. Plus one. So in this case, degree on top is two, Degree and bottom is 1, 2 equal 1 plus 1. So in this case, yes, it works. Uh, next, we have to have the remainder. Cannot equal to 0. When we have this 2, then y equal to the quotient. is the oblique asymptote, oblique asymptote. Right. So we just divide them. Right. Uh, of course, you can do the long division. Uh, here, I just use synthetic division. Uh, synthetic division, so I'm going to use the negative 4 in that corner. Right. Here we have 1, 7, and 8. Uh, we brought 1, 7, and 8. For x plus 4, we just write negative 4. Uh, so first thing we do is we brought uh, the 1 down. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Ne negative 4 plus 7 is 3. Multiply negative 12. And that is negative 4. The last number is the quotient. So, I'm sorry, the last one is the remainder, which is not equal to zero, which is good. Uh, so, the quotient, uh, y equal to the quotient in that case, will be the oblique asymptote. So, corresponding to this one and three will be y equal to uh, x plus three. So that is the oblique asymptote. Right, uh, next, uh, the x and the y intercept. Uh, y intercept, uh, we're going to let x equal to 0. x intercept, we're going to let y equal to 0. Uh, x equal to 0, so we have f of 0. Uh, so we have 0 cube minus 12 over 0 square plus 4. Uh, so we have negative 12 
over 4, so that's negative 3. So x equal to negative, sorry, x equal to 0 and y equal to negative 3. So y intercept, x equal to 0, and x intercept, uh, we're going to let y equal to 0. Meaning that the function equal to 0. And the bottom cannot be equal to 0, but we need the top equal to 0. Uh, so we just have x squared minus x minus 72 equal to 0. Uh, look like we can factor as negative 9 and plus 8. So we have x equal to negative 9, I mean positive 9, and x equal to negative 8. So y equal to 0, x could be 9 x could be negative 8 but y 0 uh, next we have x minus 9 x uh, we can combine to x squared minus 9 over x and I think we did this problem in class uh, regardless uh, I'll let you do that problem uh, so with that I uh, finish this part of the review uh, so we're up to question 37. I hope you find this helpful. Uh, thank you for watching.